Welcome back to chapter four example problems. Now, this example, we have a cart that we are pushing on. And one thing I do want to point out is that in general, pushes and pulls, there's not a specific difference. All we really care about is what direction the arrows point that we're dealing with. So we're pushing a 10 kilogram cart along a table using a 70 newton force pushing downward at a 25 degree angle. We had a picture of this in the slides, so when I draw this, I wanna make sure we recognize that even if the wording wasn't perfectly clear, the picture was provided to us in the slides. And the 25 degree angle is this angle here. So that's our push force, our applied force, and our goal is to find the acceleration and the normal force, the same pair of things that we looked at for an example a couple uh, previous where we were pulling upwards at an angle. Now everything that we do in chapter four and chapter five should always involve a free body diagram if there's more than one force. And even if it doesn't feel that way right now, there are multiple forces here, not just the one that we've drawn. If it's easier to see how this vector at an angle is broken into components, you can do so on the picture itself. This arrow points more down our page than it does up, so it has a downward component. And it points further to the right on our page than it does to the left. It has a um, component to the right. It is extremely important that we continue to remember that any time we see a vector at an angle, we break it up into components. In our free body diagram, we have this same vector. It's as if we kind of cut and paste that it is pointing down and to the right. And the same components that we've just drawn, we can draw in here. So when we see the difference between the real picture idea and the free body diagram, the main distinction is that uh, we're trying to have all of the arrows leave this central location. Uh, and sometimes for situations like this, you may find it more intuitive to focus your efforts on looking at the real picture, which is perfectly fine. That is also a force diagram. What we need to do though, is we need to consider the other forces acting here Gravity is also acting, so gravity is mass times the acceleration of gravity, in this case 10 times 9.8, and we get 98 newtons. We also have a table surface, and so the normal force is going to be pointing upwards, arrow is not drawn to scale, pointing upwards away from the table in a perpendicular kind of way. Now let's get back to our push force. So this vertical component, which we can call Fy, is going to be 70 sine 25 degrees because it is opposite where the angle is. So here we can write in that Fy is 70 sine 25 degrees. And over here we have Fx, our push force in the x direction, and that's going to be 70 cosine 25 degrees, because it's adjacent to that angle. So Fx here we can write, and it's 70 cosine 25 degrees. All right, so we've got two things. We want to find the acceleration, which is going to be in the x direction. And that's the positive direction is to the right. And we're also going to want to find the normal force, which we've already drawn in as a vertical force. And so we recognize, hopefully, that we're going to be relying on the x force equation and the y force equation separately from each other. All right, so let's start with the x equation. The net forces in the x direction are going to equal mass times the acceleration in the x direction. If we look at our free body diagram, and one thing I can really comment on that helps a lot of students, you've seen me color code these forces. You may find it useful to color code them yourself as well. You can use colored pens or pencils on your homework, on tests, whatever you want to, if you find it useful for you. 
All right, so the only force that we have in the x direction is that x component of our 70 Newton push force. The mass is 10, and our acceleration is what we're looking for. So we have 70 cosine 25 degrees. If we divide both sides by 10, we have acceleration all by itself, and we can solve for that. 6.34 meters per second squared. Quite a big acceleration, but we're also pushing on it quite a large amount. So that's our acceleration to the side. We've drawn it already that it's pointing to the right. And now we move on to the other thing we're trying to solve for, the normal force. If we look, we are moving to the side. We are not moving up and down. So although our equation that we're going to use is the standard force equation in the y direction, right away we want to realize that the acceleration in the y direction is zero here. So when we plug in our forces, they're going to equal zero. If we look back at our free body diagram, there are three separate force arrows that are pointing up and down. We have the normal force up. Because gravity points in the opposite direction, it has an opposite sign. And because the y component of our push points in the opposite direction from the normal force, it has the opposite sign of the normal force. And all of that equals zero. Now, to make sure it's not too far down our page, I'm just going to bring it all the way up to the top. The normal force minus 98, we already solved for that in the free body diagram, minus 70 sine 25 degrees equals zero. If we put all that into our calculator and then add it to both sides, we are going to get 127.6, so 128 newtons when we round. In this case, we see that the normal force is a much larger value than gravity, and that's because we're pushing the cart into the table. The table has to fight against gravity, and it has to fight against us. This is another example in our first few where we see that the normal force is not equal and opposite to gravity. It doesn't actually care what gravity is doing at all. It is just caring about what the surface is doing. So always keep in mind that drawing the free body diagram is the important part because then we just look at what arrows we have. We're not trying to memorize which cases normal force is bigger or smaller than gravity. We are simply trying to do this process of approaching each situation with our same problem solving process and being able to handle every new situation that comes our way, whether it's example problems or homework problems or test problems. So I will see you in further example videos.